In this video we're going to take a look at the challenge lure on Hack the Box. It's an easy forensics challenge and the description says finance team received an important looking email containing an attached word document. Can you take a look and confirm if it's malicious? So let's download the archive first of all. We've got a urgent payment doc file. Let's grab a copy of it. Enter in a password, hack the box. And let's take a look at the file. So first things first, check out the file type. And we see that it's a composite document, file v2 document. You can see some metadata about it. If we want to check the metadata further, we could use the exif tool. And just pass the document as parameter, and we get a list of all the different um, exif properties, uh, metadata properties. So um, what else can we do here? We can check the strings. Let's do dash n8 and say anything over eight characters. Show it to us. And if we scroll up through here, we can see a PowerShell being mentioned. Macro, uh, you can see here a PowerShell command with some encoded String, we have this megabank.local domain name as well, so that might be uh, an indicator to look for elsewhere. Okay, and um, Microsoft Office documents, so a tool that we would often, some tools that we would use to analyze these documents further, uh, if you search OLE and then hit tab, we should have some tools here that we can take a look at. Let's um, have a look at the OLE format. And open up the we'll open up the uh, documentation here, and we'll see that an OLE OLE file can be seen as a mini file system or zip archive. It contains streams of data that look like files embedded within an OLE file. And it gives an example here of a Microsoft Word document. Uh, it's a typical kind of structure of that. So we can use OLE tools. It mentions OLE file to parse OLE files, uh, and there are other ones that we have pre-installed here. So I haven't played around with these in a while. I can't remember exactly what each of them does. Let's have a look at OLE ID. And this t analyzes OLE files such as Microsoft Office documents to detect specific characteristics that could be indicate the file is suspicious or malicious in terms of malware. So let's try and run it with the name of the file. And it's just giving us some information, tells us what uh, type of document it is and if there's VBA macros, there are, but it's not really telling us too much. Let's see what else we had there. OLE. We've got. Um, well, let's use the file one that was mentioned in the documentation there. We'll go to that, an urgent document. And it says it may contain VBA macros. We have our metadata here. Base 64. Oh no, it's just it might just be a uh, double equals in there. Maybe some kind of encoding. Okay. Um, so I don't see much of interest there. What else do we have? OLE map. Let's pass it the file. It's calculating some attributes doesn't look like anything we can really use here. Let's check out the OLE VBA then. And if we check that, we see that we have our PowerShell string, which was encoded. We can also see that it's got an auto execution. So there's a document open keyword, so it's going to automatically execute. We have our megabank.local here. Um, so I guess attacking attacking the bank. What was the cha what was the challenge description? Finance team received an important email. Yeah, okay. So um, it may read system environment variables, may execute a file, a system command, may run an ex executable file on the system, may run PowerShell commands. And it says hex encoded strings were detected. We can use decode. So we can try and run this again and supply decode. 
and all it gave us was just that J was at the bottom. Okay, yeah. It just gives us J. So it's not giving us, it's not able to decode this. Sometimes the, you can also use a D ob option, but if in this case it didn't suggest using D obfuscate to, to uh, check anything. So let's um, have a look at this PowerShell command and see if we can de obfuscate it. So there's a couple of things we can do to uh, try to decode this PowerShell command. First of all, let's find out what this dash EC flag does. So if we search here, PowerShell dash EC flag, and then just check the Microsoft documentation here. It gives us uh, different parameters. So if we look for dash EC, we'll see that it's an encoded command and it accepts a base64 encoded version of a command. Use this parameter to submit commands that require complex nested quoting. So it's perhaps an obfuscated uh, string which needed to be base64 encoded due to the, the due to um, the format of it. So let's um, see if we can first of all just base64 decode it in our terminal. So take a copy of the string and then run echo we'll paste the string in and then we'll pipe it to base64-d so you'll see that we do get a more uh, readable script here although it's still obfuscated let's open it up to get a better look at it um, it's not going to format for us here but we can see it's running powershell it's running this command, it looks like it's mapping, let me, where's the word wrap on this? It looks like it's maybe mapping the characters and it's going to give them, or the, the strings here, some of them are, are more than a character and it looks like it's going to produce a URL in the end which is going to be owl, owly and then um, ht, so I guess we're probably going to have hack the box and then a flag at the end of that. So. We need to de obfuscate this further. We can try and take a copy of it and we'll take it over to uh, the Commando VM. So, this is the Windows VM. It's like a pen testing version uh, or like a Windows version of Kali um, with a lot of useful tools on it. We can open up PowerShell here and grab a copy of the command. We've got here PowerShell. And then, if you try to run that, Obviously, do this inside a VM, although it's a CTF challenge. You know, it's um, will have been checked for any malicious, uh, actual malicious uh, activity. But um, yeah, in here it says that it wasn't able to find the page because presumably it's not an actual link, and it didn't print out the link that it was trying to access. So we don't actually have uh, like a deobfuscated version. So let's look and see how we can deobfuscate this. So, what I'll do first of all, let's um, let's save a copy of the PowerShell command to our desktop. Oh, something from another previous CTF. Save this. Um, save it to the desktop. Just call it new. Dot PS1 for now. Again, let's enable our word wrap so we can see something. And I'll zoom in a bit on this to make it a bit easier on the eyes as well. So um, now let's have a look and see how we can deobfuscate this. Deobfuscate PowerShell script. All right, um, this looks good. Malware analysis in five minutes. Deobfuscate in PowerShell. So if we go through this page, we'll see that um, they're using a Windows 7 VM and PowerShell ISE, which is installed on most Windows 7 builds, and they're trying to deobfuscate this script that's been extracted from a Microsoft Word document. So they basically explain the same same scenario as, as we have here, that there's a malicious macro and it's going to automatically run, so we need to try and deobfuscate it. So we can do that by hand, um, by trying to work out, trying to map this these characters in the right order. Or we can, as is suggested here, 
take this code into PowerShell ISE, build it on Windows, run it, and then dump the variables, which is what they suggest here. So um, they've opened up PowerShell ISE. Let's do that. And they then paste in the script, run the script, and then after running, dump variables using the get variable command, which they've done here. And then they're checking the strings. So you can now see that Gaz UK, which up here was this series of numbers, is now showing a string. And then they write the output of that string and can try to deobfuscate it further from there. So if we take our PowerShell script and paste it, we run that and we get the same issue as before. It's failed to load the page, but it's not printed out the URL or flag for us. If we now try to get variable, we have our list of variables here. We see the PowerShell in the case sensitive, in the like camel case it was in. And but we don't see any, we don't see a URL here. We don't see a flag. And if we go back to the example that we have here, we'll notice that they, um, this Gaz UK was a variable that was set here. If we go to our script, we actually don't have a variable set to dump to dump out. We have this PS home, um, but apart from that, we don't have anything. So we could go through and just try to assign some variables, print them out, and see see what they look like. Essentially, let's go back to this string we had. We can say. Um, so we have this PowerShell here. Let's try first of all and say test is equal to this. Let's run it. And then let's write the output test. And it says IEX. So this is what's used to actually, IEX is the command that's used to um, open up the Internet Explorer. We're going to open this in Internet Explorer, I think. Um, and then that's obviously not our flag, it's not our URL, so let's see where else we could print this out. We could just set up variables in a couple of different locations as well and then print out each one. Maybe we'll do that. Let's um let's see what we have here. Oh let's 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 go through we'll go through them one by one. So we've tried to print that out. Not much look for us. What about if we print let's print this out. Test equals run that and let's um, write the output again oh it's the same okay it didn't that didn't get executed or something all right let's uh, take our test variable where's it gone it's not in this one all right let's um try and place it here inside this bracket this is where our actual mapping is so it looks like that's where most of the where it might be occurring let's say test equals and then run that again uh, cannot validate against the parameter URI must not be empty okay if I maybe maybe that I did something wrong there let's try and write the output again oh there we go we've printed out a URL okay and you can see that the flag is indeed appended to the end of the URL. It's um, URL encoded at the moment, so we wouldn't be able to just submit it. But if we go to Cyberchef and paste that in there and say URL decode, then we'll get our flag. Cool. Um, so how else could we have done this, though? Let's close this down. So presumably we could, let's close down our Firefox as well, presumably we could also get this through the network traffic because it was trying to requ request the URL. So if we um, look for Wireshark, networking tools, Wireshark, let's open that up. Let's open up PowerShell and grab a copy of our command got this, okay, copy that, let's 
set that to uh, capture traffic from Ethernet, and let's paste. Um, what's going on with the PowerShell there? Let me open that again. Um, okay. Oh, there we go. Um, and we can see that it's we got some requests there. Let's hit stop. We can see straight away that there was a request. Let's uh, filter it anyway. HTTP. We'll see there's a get request. We can follow this HTTP stream, and we can see our URL right here that uh, has the flag in it. Our page was not found. This was the requested page. So there's two different ways that we could solve the challenge. We could have potentially solved this using the PowerShell event login as well. So we did a challenge a couple of videos ago where we found the flag in the PowerShell logs. So we could set that up and go through the logs. That would be another way to potentially identify this. We could um, also use other login and event viewing tools, maybe um, Procmon and things like that to see what PowerShell is doing. Um, and there might be other good um, deobfuscation tools as well. Actually, let me... I, I saw one called PSD code that I didn't get to try out. Um, PowerShell script for deobfuscating other PowerShell scripts, and it gives some examples. Um, you can see of uh, the kind of things it'll be able to deobfuscate here. So that might be worth checking out as well. Um, if you solve this challenge differently to me, or you've got any tips, um, then let me know in the comments below. Thanks.